What's up everyone? John Renger from Techno Buffalo here with the full review of the fourth generation iPad, the iPad 4, the new, new iPad, whatever you want to call it. It is here with upgraded specs and a new lightning connector. Let's go ahead and see if it's worth your tablet buying dollar. is the iPad 4th generation. I'm just gonna call it the iPad 4 cause that's easier to call it. The new iPad, you can call it Fred, just don't call it late for dinner. All right, so the price ranges are the same as last generation from 499 all the way up to a beefy 830 bucks running iOS 6. Uh, let's run through the rest of the specs. From a weight standpoint, it's looking at 1.44 pounds. Screen is a 9.7 inch LED affair with IPS technology. It's right in the display, so that's gonna mean you got a resolution of 2048 by 1536. For those of you math geeks, that's 264 PPI. It's got a 42.5 watt hour battery, gonna give you about 10 hours of use. What's new here though is what's under the hood. It's got a 1.4 gigahertz dual core A6X chip with quad core graphics, augmented with a gig of RAM. This thing is an absolute beast. Uh, LTE connectivity is an option from now Sprint is being added, so you can pick from AT&T, Verizon, or Sprint. On the camera standpoint, from the back we got a five megapixel camera that can shoot 1080p video, HD recording of course, and on the front, now called a FaceTime camera, 1.2 megapixel, 720p on here. In two colors, black or white. The other big difference here is down below. Boom. That port right there is now lightning. Goodbye, 30 pin. We now have a teeny tiny little reversible lightning port. So let's talk about this guy, whether or not it's worth buying, whether or not it's worth an upgrade, or what the iPad 4 really means. It came very quickly uh, after the iPad 3. Uh, so it's going to be important to put the iPad 4 in perspective of the iPad 3, and then I'll talk about this guy on its own. So first, let's talk about the iPad 4 versus the iPad 3. So certainly, there are performance increases here. This is a much faster processor, and it can do much more, much more quickly. Uh, so if you want to get all geeky with me, uh, Geekbench score is much faster. iPad 3 was 745, iPad 4, 1,772. If you want to talk Plants vs. Zombies Low Time, which is probably one of my favorite games of all time, iPad 3 loaded it in 15.9 seconds. You're able to start killing some zombies on the iPad 4, though, in 12.5 seconds. Uh, GL benchmark, looking at 87 frames per second on the iPad 3 and 132 frames per second on the iPad 4. Uh, GL benchmarks 2.5 on screen performance. We got 52 frames per second versus 59 frames per second. So everywhere you stretch it, uh, the iPad 4 is faster. Uh, so we'll wrap up the iPad 3 part. If you have an iPad 3, there is 0.0, .0 reason to upgrade. No reason at all. Yes, it's notably faster. Sure, graphics might look a little bit better. It's going to be hardly noticeable. Wait an extra two or three seconds to load an application. Graphics are going to look great on third generation iPad. No need to upgrade to the iPad 4. Uh, in my opinion, Apple pushed out the iPad 4 squarely for that guy right there so that all of their products was unified under a single connector. They couldn't have a legacy product with a 30 pin connector. And certainly Sprint wanted to get in on the game. Uh, from the iPad standpoint on its own, it is a traditional iPad. Everything on it works really well. Uh, we can load you know, technobuffalo.com. The screen looks gorgeous. The whites are white. The blacks are black. Because that retina display, there's never any text pixelization that you might get on an iPad 2 or an iPad mini uh, with that lower resolution. Things just look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, playing video on it is absolutely outstanding. You can watch a movie and you could be good to go for quite a while. Video quality is awesome. Uh, of course, the big deal here uh, is the App Store. It's got all the apps that Apple offers. There really isn't much of a value add versus the iPad 3. If you're coming from an iPad 2, an iPad 1, it's gonna be a great upgrade. You're gonna be introduced to a retina display, which really you can see a difference, and you're going to get that better graphics performance. But if you've got a third generation, just skip this guy completely uh, and wait for the next gen. Perhaps we'll see a case redesign. I will say though, having played with and used the iPad mini for a while, this feels like a freak-sized iPad. It feels jumbo uh, to me. Uh, so if you're looking to get a new iPad, definitely try the iPad mini first. A little lower resolution certainly, but you might like the size. I'm finding that I'm really enjoying uh, the iPad mini. And for me, if I was looking to get an iPad right now and I didn't have one, I think the iPad mini would uh, steal my money. It just seems to be a better feel. For whatever reason, I hated the idea of an iPad mini until I had a chance to actually use one. Uh, with devices like the Nexus 7, I loved the way they performed and I loved the way they looked, but I always thought that I preferred a larger iPad. Turns out I just prefer an iPad, uh, and I prefer iOS on the tablet side. And really, this is the king 
of the iOS tablets. So if you're looking to get one, you know what it's gonna do. Cameras are gonna be fine on it. Video is gonna look great. Uh, it's going to work pretty well. It's not much new you can say about this. It hasn't been said with previous generation iPads. It works well. It's gonna have great performance. You're gonna have the same amount of battery life you had at the last gen despite the upgrade in performance. Uh, and you're gonna get just a nice tablet experience. And of course, all the accessories will be available for it as well. Uh, iPad 4 on the Techno Buffalo scale gets a solid nine. I like to see thinner bezels, uh, similar to what we have in the iPad mini. One of the cool things that that's got is as you hold it, uh, you continue to scroll, it's not gonna do anything. Um, so certainly that big bezel isn't gonna be necessary. It's a feature that got built into the newest version of iOS 6. So that big bezel is not going to need to be there so you can manipulate it without sort of accidentally touching the screen. So I certainly would like uh, to see a smaller bezel. Perhaps a case redesign uh, would have improved it and got it up to that very coveted 10 spot. This is a great tablet, uh, arguably one of the best tablets on the market. Uh, I'm John Redger from Techno Buffalo. Check us out for the latest and greatest tech news. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.